Hi, welcome to Rock for a Pillow. And my name is Will, and uh, today I'm gonna share my testimony with you. And talking about my testimony, I have a really long testimony. Now, I would uh, kindly remind you that uh, if you really want to stick to the to the end of my testimony, please prepare some popcorn or you know chips, anything that can you know keep you awake, because this is gonna be a long testimony. So on it, anyway, so without further uh, further ado, I'm gonna get into my testimony. So uh, to start my testimony, I think you know, we should always go back to the beginning. For me, the beginning will be in China and when I was born. So a lot of people think, you know, well, well you're Chinese and, uh, and the God of Israel has some, anything to do with you when, when you were born? And the answer is yes. And let me tell you why. So uh, when I was born, uh, for some of you probably don't know, uh, there is a policy or law called one child policy. And what that law does is um, the law only allow one family to hold, to have one boy and uh, that's it. If you have a second boy, the second boy gonna be like you know abandoned or the family gonna decide whether they should they want to pay for the second boy. And in my case, I was a second boy and when I was born, uh, to be honest with you, you know my, my parents didn't want me to be a boy but they, they really want me to be a girl but I end up being a boy so there's no choice for my parents and now they are facing with the dilemma like whether to keep me or abandon me so uh, to be honest with you uh, growing up uh, my parents always like tell me like in a joke manner hey Will you are uh, adopted and I was like what do you mean I'm adopted so and they would tell me like, okay, now you just adopted. So I keep asking them why, why you know I'm adopted. So finally, my mom uh, shared the story with me. So according to her, you know what happened was when I was born, uh, you know I'm the second boy. So the government telling them, okay, uh, you gotta you either abandon the boy or you gotta pay for a lot of money. So my parents at the beginning decide to you know like just let me go because that's a lot of money. That's like uh, one fourth of our family saving. And at that time, my family was not better off, to be honest with you. So it was really a, uh, 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 you know, <laughs> a hot cold, like, you know, the hard to decide. But so my parents were like, okay, we're going to let this boy go. But for some reason, things changed. And then the, uh, according to my mom, she said, you know, uh, at, at some point, her heart and uh, spirit changed. And then the, she, she started feeling co compassionate and sympathetic for me. So then she started talking to my dad, like, you know, about keeping me. So in the end, my dad was com convinced and then they pay for the money, pay the money for me. So that's why, you know, I survived and, and I'm alive and I'm, and I'm really, really grateful. And honestly, you know, before I thought, well, I should be really grateful for my mom because that was my mom, you know, decided to uh, change, his, change her mind to keep me and talk to my dad. And then now I realize, wait a minute, you know, uh, the, the, the one that I should really be thankful for, Maybe not, not my mom, but the God of Israel. So anyway, so um, that's my uh, story at the beginning. And then uh, ever since that point, I grow up, right, as a, like, you know, typical uh, Chinese boy, you know, and going to school, you know, study math, mathematics, you know, physics, all those subjects, like science-related uh, science subjects. And I was really good at it, you know, uh, to be honest with you. And, and during, uh, between, uh, between my birth and like you know, high school, high school all the way to college, and uh, I was like you know a religious uh, Buddhist Buddhist guy, and my whole family they you know uh, they still keep, you know worshiping Buddha and bow down to Buddha every year, and I remember you know um, growing up every year at the beginning of the year, uh, we would get up early and go to the temple and bow down to te uh, to Buddhas in the temple and start praying to to, to Buddha, and I remember you know my, my parents would pray for. My family's well-being, like you know, I pray for the more money, right, more safety in my house, and but for me, I'll be like, you know, I'll be like praying, all right, Buddha, uh, please, you know, give me like four, four or five inches taller, you know, because I was pretty sure, right, and and also I'll be praying for my, you know, uh, my my good grade in examination for for this year, and basically, you know, in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is, you know, even though I was uh, following, like my parents. Uh, religion and, and 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 my my parents were not even you know really believing what they believe you know they, they were just like the, being a traditional Buddhist so uh, so were my my brother and I so we were just like you know tag along and do whatever they taught us to do 
and we don't know we don't even know what Buddhism really is who Buddha really is so <clears throat> so in a nutshell we we worship Buddha but we don't even have a relationship with it uh, with the Buddha so so long story short you know that's that's pretty much you know uh, uh, what was going on uh, in my childhood and then all the way to the high school you know I was I was very good uh, student, you know. Sometimes get very good uh, grades, and then I was really strong at uh, mathematics. Like like I told you, mathematics, physics, chemistry. You know, maybe depends. And then I, I was never into like subjects like Chinese, English, and those subjects really like you know are boring to me. But you know what? So something happened, and uh, and there was a turning point in my high school. And mind you that there are many turning points in my life. And this was the first turning point. And all those turning points that lead me to become who I am today. And lead me to become a follower of God of Israel. So the first turning point was like in high school. Now, I was like, like I said, I was really into math, right? And then until like the senior year in high school, and for some reason, uh, my passion and interest uh, from math, all the uh, shift or switch to the English. I was like, no, I didn't remember what happened, but for some reason, I just have such a hunger and and and, and craziness for for learning English. And I and I remember it's a there is a funny story that I always tell people. Uh, in high school, when I was in this uh, in math class, I would literally just you know pull out uh, a uh, Oxford dictionary, in, English uh, English dictionary, and start reciting, memorizing. Uh, the vocabulary is from A to Z, and my classmates like are sitting right next to me. He he look at me, Will, what are you doing? Like this is math class, and well, what is that? And I show him like it's the English dic dictionary. He was really amazed, like shocked. So uh, I just telling you this uh, to to show you how crazy I was. Like I, I would even sacrifice a math class for to for learning English, and and probably you you don't see why that's so important, but learning English. Is it paving the way for me for my future, uh, uh, future life in America? Because without passing the English uh, test, I would not be able to come to America. So, so you can see that you know, God, even in my high school, He has changed my heart to pursue English so that I I I could be able to accept it by the school here in U.S. So, so that's my basically you know my high school life. And now after that, my life would just keep going on. Nothing special happened all the way to the college years. Freshman, you know, sophomore, just you know, going through some crazy lifestyle on campus. You know that, right? And then um, until the second turning point, you know, and that took place uh, at my junior year in college, and it was two thousand eight. And what happened was, uh, one day my friends asked me to go swimming, so I. I didn't know how to swim at that time. And uh, so I was like, okay, cool, I'm going with you. So long story short, we went to the swimming pool and then uh, they, they were teaching me all the, you know, uh, um, all the things about skills about swimming. And I got it, you know, but I, I, I couldn't just flow. So so we were hanging out at the shallow part in the beginning and later on my friends like got bored and they, they, they decided to uh, move to the deep part, which is like, you know, uh, like two meters tall uh, swimming pool. So. I wasn't really wanted to go, but and but my friends like, oh well, just go with us. So I went with them and stayed at the deep part. And uh, long story short, we were uh, we were staying together, and they they told me that we'll we'll protect you, we'll stay with you, don't worry, you'll be fine. And then but later on, you know, they they just you know swim away. I was left alone at the corner of the swimming pool. So what am I gonna do at this uh, swimming pool at the corner, right? So because nobody with me and I couldn't swim. So uh, to entertain myself, I decided to like, you know, practice in my uh, holding breath. So what I did was like, you know, I closed my eyes and uh, just gently let go of my hands and then the go into the water. And mind you that I didn't have my, my goggle and, uh, and the nose plug. So, so I, I, I couldn't see anything. So I was in the water and then uh, for about 30 seconds, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't hold it any longer. Then I decided to, you know, to reach to the shore, right? And then, uh, so I was like, uh, just imagine like, I was in the water and I closed my eyes and I first stretched my right hand, didn't feel nothing, didn't touch anything. And then I reached out my left hand, again, the same thing. 
Then after that, I was like, my heart started beating like rapidly crazy, like rapidly fast. And I was like, where am I? Where am I? I was like, oh man, you know, uh, I, I thought I was right next to the shore. So, so, you know, I was struggling a couple of times, you know, patting my, my arms, but no, nothing happened. No, no, I couldn't touch anything. So then I, I like, you know, talk to myself in my mind, like in water, like, okay, Will, calm down, calm down. What can you do to, you know, get up, uh, get above the water, at least save your time, to get some, get more breaths and go into the water and then wait for other people to save you, right? Okay, so, so that's what I did. I, I just like, you know, first I try like, you know, use my hand, like, you know, propel the water like uh, upwards so that my body can go down according to, according to the physics. I thought I was, was right, but uh, as I was doing it, and I also stretched my legs, and my legs couldn't touch anything. So, and I was trying to reach the bottom and then go up, right? But my feet couldn't touch anything. So I was like, okay, forget about this. And then the, uh, how about just stay still? So I try to stay still, like, you know, holding my body like this and, and, and thinking that my body will go down naturally and uh, sink down to the, bo to the bottom and then step up, right? But that didn't happen either. I was like stuck in the middle. I couldn't go up or down. Then, I mean, I mean that, that was like at least one minute passed. And I was like really panicking, and um, it was like so scary at the moment. And but you know, and at that moment in the water, you know, there was a lot of things going on in my mind because I thought to myself, okay, I couldn't hold my breath anymore, and my face like swollen like like this big, and I couldn't open it because I, I was afraid, and I couldn't, I I didn't want to open my eyes eyes because you know I was uh, afraid of opening my eyes and the water all coming in because I I didn't know how to swim, right? So I couldn't do either of those things, but. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I, all I can do was struggling. So as I was struggling, my my breath was was was, was you know become less less less. I couldn't hold it any longer. And then at that moment, to tell you the truth, you know what? Uh, have you ever like, taste the taste the death? You know, probably most people don't in their lifetime. But I actually have tasted the the the, the taste the death at that moment because. It was so close to death, and at that moment, instantly, my mind, there's so many things going on. I instantly uh, think about my parents. And then I think about my parents, and I, you know, uh, I already picture in my mind that, okay, my parents in the funeral. That's my funeral. And they were crying. And my brother was also, also there. And they were crying over my death, and my whole family was falling apart. So thinking about that, and my heart is like feeling so sour at that moment in the water. And I was like, oh man, I, I, why I'm here today? You know, I was like blaming myself, self, you know, why I'm here today? I'm, I'm gonna die, I'm only like 23, but uh, I'm gonna die for nothing. So it was like, it was really, really bitter. But, so, but anyway, I thought at the moment, I'm gonna die for sure. And guess what happened next? So right before I, I you know, I passed my, my breath, but I was stru still struggling in the water, right? And then, Right before that, my left hand landed on something, felt like someone's thigh. And then, you know, of, uh, because of the momentum, I just grabbed the thigh, boom, pull, pull myself up and reached the shore. And I was like, you know, and, and instantly I just wipe, wipe away the water from my eyes and then start opening my eyes and see who is that guy that saved me? Because like I, I was really, really thankful because I can breathe, I can feel the ear. So I was like, who is that guy that saved me, right? And guess what happened? To surprise you, um, and and shock me at the moment, I didn't see anybody. And I was like, so I was at, at the shore, and I was like, nobody. Okay, so who whose time was it? So and then I, okay, to tell you the truth, it reminds you that I'm a very logical person because I'm an engineer. So instantly at the moment, I try to reason like what happened. So I look at the shore, see if, if there was anybody walk up uh, up on the shore because I, I, I thought that that person was too fast and go up, climb up the stairs and already on the shore. But within two meters, I didn't see anybody. Then I like, okay, then I thought, okay, maybe, maybe I pull too hard and that guy just pull, drag it into the water by myself and then he's in the water, so I, so, so I look into the water and n nobody. So then, then, then I get really puzzled and uh, but anyways, I couldn't figure out what happened. So, so my friends are coming back, and uh, I didn't tell them the story because I, 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 I'm afraid they will be like, you know, Will, 
you're making this up. You know, you 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 just like you know trying to uh you know blame us, right? So anyway, so I didn't tell anybody about that story, and even my parents, and that has become my mystery in my life. But later on, I found out what happened. So, but anyway, um, I will continue move on with my stories. So after two thousand eight. That that even mystical uh, event in the swimming pool. Then uh, another turning point happened in two thousand nine. That's next year. So uh, in two thousand nine, I met American friend uh, whose name is Nick, and he's from Ohio, uh, Ohio, uh, United States. And then uh, he would, um, he's the martial artist in uh, in uh, jiu jitsu, uh, uh, Brazilian jiu jitsu. And I'm really into martial arts. So, so martial arts. So I start, you know, practicing martial arts with him for for about like four months, right? So, and during that four months, we did, we develop very close relationship, and then get to know each other very well. So, <clears throat> and 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 to be honest with you, I really respect Nick as a person because he's very responsible and very disciplined person, and a man with principle. So, um, and one day when we are training, and then. Uh, uh, he took off his sh uh, shirt, and then, and I saw on his back there was like a tattoo, on his back, and when I look at it, like there's two figures like fighting against each other. So I asked it, like Nick, so what what is the tattoo you have on the back? And he told me like, well, um, yeah, they, this is two angels like fighting against each other. Okay, I was like, so what what are they doing? They say you know, okay, there's a good angel fighting against the evil angel. So I I, I didn't really know what he was talking about, but I thought that's in intriguing. And uh, pretty curious, but anyway, long story short, you know, uh, 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 after four months, unfortunately, the you know, Nick, uh, he decided to return to U.S. And then before he's returned to U.S., he called me up like, "Will, let's get together and hang out uh, at, at the club that I work at." Though he he was a security guard at the club, so he called me up and 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 we hang out at his club, and I and he told me that, "Oh, Will, I'm leaving." Back to a uh, U.S. So I was like, the wheel, uh, 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 Nick, you know, why, why are you going back? You know, Shanghai, Shanghai is uh, such a good city, right? Because uh, okay, I, I grew up in in the city called Shanghai. So Nick was in Shanghai, and then uh, that's why I asked it, asked that question, and then I I I didn't understand why Nick, you know, why, why to uh, come back to U.S. So so and uh, and Nick, the response. Nick gave me was like, well, um, I don't know. Um, I miss my home. I miss American life. And I think, you know, Shanghai is a sinful city. So when I heard that, the word sinful, sinful, right? And I couldn't understand. But I, I pretend like, you know, I know it. Like, okay. I said, okay, okay, Nick, I get it. I get it, you know. <laughs> but I actually, I don't really get it. So, but anyway, so next day, we hang out all night long. And next day, uh, Nick took me to a Starbucks uh, nearby, and then then we sit down and have a conversation, and then he starts sharing his life with me, and uh, <clears throat> so I say, you know what, uh, Nick, you know, uh, I I really I really respect you, you know, you you ha you are man of character, you know, you are very disciplined, you know, I I think you your past life is also you know very very you know. Uh, good right you know that that's that, that's become who you are right and and nick responds you know well you know what i was not like like who i am today and uh, i was really a bad dude on, on the street and i was like are you kidding me nick you know I, you're such a responsible person and uh man of principle you know so so what happened you know what, what happened what happened that make you become who you are today and nick said well um it is, it is God, and I was like, okay, Nick. So God, which God are you talking about? And Nick respond, um, he said, you know, will um, probably you won't understand, you know, but but, uh, the God that I believe is, you know, the God of Bible. And I was like, okay, Bible. And he asked me, Do, have you ever heard of heard about Bible? And I was like, yeah, I heard about Bible, but I never read it, right? I don't understand what the Bible is talking about. So, so basically, you know, uh, Nick's was telling me, yeah, you know, uh, it it is God of Bible that that has changed his life uh, life around to to transform him from a gangster to 
a person who he is today. So, you know, after he, he, he departed back to the U.S., you know, that stuck with me. I, you know, I was like, because my respect, all of my respect for him, I, I was curious about the guy he believed in. So I started like searching now for what Bible is. And guess what? You know, like, um, probably, you know, it, 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 maybe you, you will laugh at me, like, you know, um, when you're trying to learn something, right, you, you, you wouldn't like read something. You probably was uh, seeking for some audio or MP3 uh, uh, stuff to listen to. So that's how I learned everything. So, so as I was searching for the information about Bible, I was, I was searching for what kids uh, would pick up from any book. And that is through listening to a story. So I found the audio uh, audio uh, book online, which is MP3, and listened to the Bible story. And to me, it was like the Bible story is like uh, all the fairy tales, like you know, that nothing really real to me. But I just finished the you know the story, listened to it. I felt like very intrigued. So, but nothing really you know after that happened, right? So then it was 2009, and then 2010, and I was fortunately you know accepted by a school in Detroit, Michigan, in United States. Right, and then, so when I first landed, and uh, the ch the people from the church of ch the Chinese church here, they they invite us to the church, and that was my first time, you know, experiencing church. And to be honest with you, I love the people in church, and they were very nice, and they were very loving, very 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 kind. They helping me a lot. But when it comes to the Bible study, I literally like. I was like dozing off in the Bible study. I, I felt so embarrassing. Probably some people already like see me dozing off. But uh, but I'm telling you this because I want to show you that that no like little interest that I had in Bible at the time because it was so boring to me. But long story short, I I keep going to the church for social purpose, like meeting people, and not for really you know uh no for the knowledge of Bible. Uh, that that was going on for a year. But fortunately, in that year. I met, you know, a few Christian friends in school, and one of the friends, his name is Brett McCarthy. Um, so that guy, you know, just came to me and uh, started making friends with me, and not even, not even talking about Bible. And then, long story short, you know, as we become friends, as we hang out more and more, he starts sharing like a, a biblical information with me. Right? I didn't get it, but I was like, okay, I'm open to anything. Uh, you, 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 you will say to me, Brad, you know, so, so later on, Brad, uh, asked me, so Will, you know, I, I, I see you like to, you know, hang out with, uh, American students, and, and because, uh, you, 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 you're such a social person, so, hey, I have, uh, you know, activities Monday night at my dorm, would you like to come? And I was like, yeah, sure, Brad, you know, hey, you know, yeah, I, I'll come, so, I went to his, uh, activities, and I didn't know that was Bible study, right? So I just, you know, so I kind of mingle into the uh, the group and start to hang out with them. And then uh, later that I found out that, well, they're actually studying the Bible. And uh, <clears throat> and to be honest with you, when they, when, they, when, when they talk about the Bible and stuff, I didn't quite understand. But uh, I just tag along because the friendship that I had with, with Brad. So I stuck with them for, for a semester, didn't change my belief around at all, but at least, you know, I get an idea, you know, what a Christian life look like. And, and, and also the most important thing that I learned from, which also helped me later on, uh, in some of the uh, story or event happened, uh, is the prayer that, that they teach me. So they teach me how to pray in different situations. So I learned it, right? So uh, that happened in 2011. And then, then the next turning point happened. So mind you that before, before, before 2011 summertime, I didn't believe in God at all. Even though I'm going to church and going to the Bible study, but I don't believe God, period. And then, but then one event happened, changed my belief around. So what happened was in summertime 2011, one day, I don't know, I, um, I don't remember which day, but uh, I remember that day, uh, for some reason, I was very anxious. And I was like, you know, I, 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 and I was trying to go to school, but my car was running out of gas. So I stopped by a gas station near my home, and then just like get out the door, like open the door, boom, get out, and, and pull my credit card, swipe it, and pump in my car up. 
right? Once the pumping is finished, I just, you know, close the door, boom, drive. And, but, but before then, I forgot to, uh, I put my wallet on the trunk, on the trunk of my car. So, and as you can imagine, I was so hurry and I forgot to pick up my uh, wallet from the trunk and I just drove away. So my wallet lost, slide off the car, and I didn't know. And then until I get to the school, about five minutes away from the gas station, and I start searching for my wallet. And I couldn't find my, uh, couldn't find my wallet. And I was like really, 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 you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, upset. So, and I start like thinking, okay, where, where have I been before, before the school? So, and that's a gas station. So when I went back to the gas station and then uh, asked the Seven uh, Eleven guy, and he said nobody returned any wallet. And and actually, you know, there's something very important I need to uh, remind you is in a wallet, there are uh, there were nine hundred. Uh, cash, 900 bucks cash in a wallet. And the wallet itself is also like, you know, pretty expensive. <laughs> uh, and with all the credit cards and, and everything, it's very valuable to me. And and also those money, it's all coming from China and it's all, all coming from my parents because I didn't have a job at all. So that's very, very important to me. So, and then, um, so I lost the wallet, right? <clears throat> and I was really, really uh, low at that point. But uh, I still need to go on the day. So I as I was driving back to school, and uh, I just like driving, driving. But as I was driving, I just m look at the sky, like, and I was I start thinking about God, and I was uh, questioning God, and I was blaming God while, while I was driving. I was like, God, why, why would you make that happen? Why would you make my wallet lost today? That's a lot of money. That's a lot of you know, uh, uh, you know, important uh, stuff in it. Why would you allow that happen? And I was blaming first. And then shortly after, my, uh, my mindset changed. And I was thinking, okay, maybe this happened, this event happened so that I can avoid some the bigger disaster gonna happen down the road, right? So with that in mind, I kind of felt like, okay, God maybe is trying to protect me, right? So, and then and I felt so much better after that. And I, I, I just go about the day, you know, doing my thing, cancel all the credit cards, you know, uh, from the bank. And then I, but I never expect that my wallet will ever, I will never ever get a wallet back. Never. Because, so, but guess what? The second day, something happened. My friend, whose name is Jason, he called me up and I say, he, he said, Will, uh, so, you know, uh, where are you? I said, you know, okay, you know, what's going on, Jason? And he said, you know, okay, someone's looking for you. Uh, in my dorm today, and uh, and uh, he's mentioning something about the wallet, and I was like, wallet? Okay, so who is that guy? I is he still there? He said, no, he's gone, but uh, he left his contact information. Okay, so so I got contact information, the phone number from Jason, and I called that guy, and and I calling him. That guy's like pick up the phone, and I tell him that okay, you are the guy that you know dropped the wallet. That day, I was right behind you. I, 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 I was like screaming at you, but you were driving too fast. You didn't pay attention, right? So, so he, but I have your wallet. So when can I give it to you? And I said, oh, yeah, thank you so much, sir. Uh, how about tomorrow? And then so then, then he said, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, we, we can meet tomorrow. And then the next day, uh, we, we are appointed to meet at the, at, the, at the outside of the campus dormitory. So as I was waiting there, because I was there before him, uh, he got there. As I was waiting, now, <laughs> you know, at that point, right, uh, to be honest with you, um, I have some biased, you know, kind of uh, opinion like, over, you know, the, the, the societal kind of standard. Anyway, uh, I, as I was waiting, I was waiting for like you know, someone dressed up, you know, someone like a white collar, right? You know, someone dressed up, like have, don't have any issue with money. Because I figured, you know, who would give 900 buck cash? back to someone, you know, if they need money, right? So, uh, <clears throat> so I mean, so I was waiting, I was waiting for that person, but that kind of person never show up. And then later on, you know, there was a guy coming this way, approaching me. And there was a, you know, black people, a black person. And, and again, you know, uh, based on what, what I was taught in China, I have kind of like, you know, biased, 
you know, attitude or opinion to, towards, you know, black people. But I now, now I look back, I, I was completely wrong. So, but at that time, I was totally biased, you know, and, <laughs> and that person just, just come over and, uh, <clears throat> and he, he keep you know, approaching me and he looked like, he just keep looking at me. And I was like, why are you looking at me like that? Right. You know, I, I don't know you. So, and then, but he's just like walking closer and closer and start pointing at me. I was like, no way. Are you that person? So, so I start walking towards him. And as I walking towards him, I was like, uh, I was like, okay. Uh, and then he said, you know, how you doing, brother? And shake my hands. And then, um, and I asked, okay, are you that guy? He said, yes, I'm that guy with your wallet. So and then, then I start hugging him, you know, anyway. Um, so then, then we start talking about the wallet and he gave me the wallet and he asked me, okay, so just, just check if there was anything missing in your wallet. And I checked everything, 900 bucks, it's there. All the credit cards, all the uh, drive license, it's there. And I was, I felt so touched. Like, but I, I, I have a question. I always have a question about it. Why would you, you know, return the wallet back to me? So later on, as I walk him out, and I ask him, you know, sir, um, I, I'm just curious, I mean, why would you return my wallet back to me? And there was a lot of money in it. And most people wouldn't return that amount of money, right? So, and then uh, he said, you know, um, you know what, uh, I'm a Christian. And that's the first thing that he said, I'm a Christian. And, uh, you know, when I saw your wallet, when I pick it up and see an Asian face, and immediately I thought about, well, this Asian guy probably just, you know, a, 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 a exchange student from, from Asian country. And this 900 bucks means a lot to him. So I think I should return to him. And, uh, and, and I believe, you know, God has, has, uh, has divinely, intentionally put me there to witness your wallet, uh, to be lost. So, so that I can return back to you. And, and God wants us to love each other as brothers and sisters. And I hope what I have done to you today, you will do, to, you will do the same thing to others. And that's what, what he said. And guess what? Whatever he said, immediately changed my heart at the moment. I felt so touched. And at that moment, I instantly believe in God. You know, you, 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 you might be like, okay, so what, what make you instantly believe in Him? Right? And actually, in that story, there's many details uh, that, that, that can, I can tell you that it's divine setup. So, first of all, um, after that, you know, after we departed, right? So, and uh, I asked for the, 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 the person, the gentleman's uh, address. And he gave me the address. And uh, I, I tried to, you know, set up a day to, to go to his house and give him some Chinese tea as a gift, as a thanking gift, right? And then two, day, two days later, I call him. And guess what happened? You know, mind you that I call him before. We contact on the phone before. The same number. But two days later, I call him up. And it's like on the other side, I heard like D D D D D D from the phone. That tells me the phone is no longer in service. And I was really puzzled. Like only two days, why? You know, okay, could that be that the person has changed his phone number? You know, that that could be possible, right? But uh, but I now I, I don't believe that. But and also in that story, now I have to like rewind to uh to to share the the detail with you. So the reason why I believe that's a divine setup is that <clears throat> now during the summertime, I already move out of the campus and live off campus in the apartment, right? And my friend Jason, who is supposed to live with me in the apartment. Okay, now now you'll be like, oh, if you remember that Jason was in the dorm because that's when that's where that guy went to the my dorm, the school dorm to uh, meet Jason and give his phone number to Jason, right? And now how will Jason end up in that room? What happened was in the summertime, uh, the apartment I, I, I lived in had a bug treatment. So it was really bad. And Jason's parents don't want Jason to live in the apartment. So before he's coming back to school for the fall semester, 
and his parents uh, telling Jason to to apply for a uh, dormitory room in school and it was already too late it's very late if you know it, it's 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 very hard to apply for a room you know before the school started the new semester started right so he applied it and guess what with which room he applied it he applied for the same room that I used to live in before I moving out uh, out of campus and the number was a room 408 I still remember and and the thing is that's one connection right there and the other thing is um, on my driver license when the gentleman pick up my wallet and he look at it I didn't update the address on my driver license right so the the address on my driver license is still my dorm address and then so that's why that's why the gentleman could go to the dorm and find out find out where I used to live in that room and it just so happened Jason was in that room now if you think about it, if Jason just didn't move back to school in the summertime and end up living with me now who gonna live in, in the 408 room probably some someone else so the person the gentleman will never reach me thus I would never get my wallet back and thus I would never probably I, I wouldn't say never but I, I would not believe in God so if you think about it and, and, and also like for the fact that he disappeared on the phone to me it's like okay if it's not God I don't know you know who, who else can be the, the chance for the happen is very 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 slim now anyway so so that that's when I believe in God and and, and, and actually when we departed that day I immediately go back to my home on that night and I post it on the Facebook saying thank God you know the capital letters so <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> now okay so this is the first event that that you know what uh, turn my belief from not believing God to believe in God okay now the next event also happened in the summertime 2011 and that event turned me uh, from not believing in Jesus Christ to Jesus Christ so what happened uh, in that event is so the summertime August I went back to China and then for for a month so I already booked my uh, uh, round trip uh, the flight has been booked right and I was supposed to come back uh, come back to United States August 25th then I didn't know what after I, I, I went back to China I didn't know that uh, I need to go through the uh, visa interview like the, uh, renew my visa so as I was going through the visa interview, I end up being checked by American government. So uh, probably, probably you guys will, uh, will, will, will be like, okay, so what's a big deal? You, know, you got checked, right? But, uh, but it's a serious thing because when you get checked, you don't know when you will get your visa approved. It could be next day, it could be a month, it could be three months, or it could be half a year or even a year. And you don't know until the visa will be approved by American government. So, so during that period, before August 25th, I was waiting, waiting, waiting. And I did everything I can trying to, trying to uh, find, find some help, right? To, uh, to help me get, get the visa approved faster. And I contact school, and school telling me, all right, Will, um, there is nothing we can do to help you because FBI is investigating you. And when I heard, FBI wait a minute like what what have I to do with FBI you know what what, 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 what what's the deal you know it, it sounds so serious but anyway I couldn't do anything because FBI was investigating me and then all I can do was waiting now so I was waiting 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 and then on August 23rd if you mark the day August 25th is the day I was supposed to departure taking the uh, flight back to U US and because I don't have visa, I could not go. On August 23rd, at night time, uh, I, I still don't have the visa. Then 11 p.m. on that day, August 23rd, for some reason, I was like, I, I'm thinking about God and thinking about praying to God because at that moment, I, I know I was helpless and hopeless because nobody can help me. And I thought, you know, uh, as the last you know, uh, resort, maybe I can uh, turn to the God of Israel so that he can help me with it. 
So I start praying at my bed. And as I was praying to get uh, to, to God, and uh, the first thing I said is, God, I know I'm a sinner. And I've done so many things uh, wrong in the past. I hope you will forgive me. And, and the reason why I pray that is because remember the Bible study that, that I went through, there are other people that teach me how to pray. And uh, w whenever you, you try to confess to God, and that's exactly how I pray. And then the, the prayer at that night was very long, but I, I don't know all the details, but what I remember is it was my very first time I, I initiated prayer um, out of my genuine heart because before then I was always, always follow other people like in the Bible study or church setting where everybody praying, I pray with them, but I never initiate my own prayer to God. So, and then, so I pray long time and then I end up with in the name of Jesus Christ, amen, right? And I just w went to sleep and, 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 tell, and tell you the truth, you know, after the prayer, for some reason I felt so peaceful. And comfort. I felt like okay. I I did my best, you know. <laughs> so, but anyway, I didn't expect anything will, will will happen with my visa. Now, next day, August twenty fourth, visa didn't come, right? And then, but on August twenty fifth, early in the morning, nine thirty, nine nine thirty o'clock, my visa came, and I was very very happy. But at the same time, I was like, "Come on, God, why why why?" Why would you give me the visa like you know right at this time and my flight is 10 o'clock in the morning and if you can give me the visa way ahead of time like the 23rd august 23rd i i don't need to change my flight so but anyway i had my visa you know i was very happy i didn't really you know look into the visa but the next day i just opened up my my visa and when i look at my visa i noticed something significant so on, on my visa, there is a date of issue, and that's when the visa is issued, right? And I see the date is August 24th. Now, you probably, you don't catch the uh, importance here. Uh, uh, I have to, to tell you uh, two other times that, that, that I have my, uh, my uh, visa check. Because I went back to China four times, but uh, I, I had uh, three times getting checked by American government. And... And the other two times, the visa, you know, between the approval of the visa and the day I received the visa is at least two days, sometimes three days. And, but the first time when I get it, I see the date of issue on the visa indicate that's August 24th. And if you know what I was talking about, I was praying to God August 23rd. Now the next day, next day, it was approved. And then, then the third day, I get my visa back. So it takes only one day for the visa to be shipped to China and I get it. How could it possibly happen? You know, it, and you know, it's, it, it, it takes a long time for, for the visa to be, you know, uh, shipped, right? But anyway, so to me, you know, it's, it's basically the God's answering to my prayer. And the fact that I, I, I at that moment, Submit to him and turn to him for help because I don't have any other people or God can help me. So I turn to him and sub completely submit to him, and he sees it and he answers my prayer. And after that that, that event, I believe it, uh, I start believing in Jesus Christ, right? Then, then after that, I come back to U.S. continue my uh, school, right? As I'm continuing the school, everything seems to pretty pretty good at the beginning but something you know uh, dramatic happened uh, happened um, so in the later year of uh, later part latter part of that year um, for some reason you know at the beginning uh, when I was in school I uh, honestly I, I was pretty popular guy and uh, a lot of American a lot of American like they know me uh, one time I have a American friend uh, he, he told me that, Will, you know, you know, everyone knows you in school. And anyway, you know, so, but, you know, at that time, I, I also have a lot of Chinese friends, right? But for some reason, and because, because I, I hang out with Amer a lot of American friends, 
and my Chinese friends, they, they, they start feeling like, you know, a oh, will, will like, you know, to hang out with American uh, students more than us. So, and, and also, uh, in addition, there's many other mi misunderstanding. I'm not going to go into those misunderstanding. Uh, all those misunderstanding, misconception that cause that the, my Chinese friends or Chinese peer in the school, they, they, they have the idea that, okay, Will like to hang out with American and he's American guy, you know, he doesn't like to uh, hang out with the Chinese. So all of a sudden, I, 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 I was like in the position, all the American, they know me and they like me. And then all the Chinese, they hate me, they distant from me. And they don't even talk about why they don't want to communicate with me. And, and to be honest with you, I, 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 I didn't get it, you know, I didn't get it. So, so because all this happened, um, it changed my, it changed my spiritual, uh, spirituality because I felt so low and that was the lowest point of my life. And I, I remember, you know, during those times, all the way to uh, the beginning of, uh, to, uh, 2012. And I, I was living in that, uh, condition, living in that mode where, where, you know, I have to, to deal with different groups, you know, and then sometimes when I come back to the dorm, come back to my uh, apartment. And at nighttime, I was just like looking at the, uh, at the ceiling while I was sleeping. And I just like question God, God, why, why this is all happening? You know, why, why all my people, they, they don't like me, but people, but those who are not my people, they like me. I don't get it. So, so many nights it, during those times, I felt so lonely. And I, I tried to seek help, but no, because, you know, my parents wouldn't get it. I, and I didn't tell my parents. And there's no friends understand me. I tried to communicate with, communicate with them, trying to reason with them. But just for some reason, like, you know, there is always misunderstanding uh, there. So, so the only, only one I can seek help from is the God. So that's why many nights I just like, you know, pray to God, open my eyes, look at the ceiling of my room, and then just like, you know, God, why? Uh, tell me what how me how me figure this out why this ha all happening but even though that that didn't you know solve the problem but at least during that period my relationship with god was is getting closer closer and i believe god used that w w whatever happened at the time to to discipline me and to draw me closer to him now and, and mind you that you know that was the first time that i experienced that my people, uh, you know, re reject me. Okay, and then later on, uh, moving towards 2012, and as I as I start, you know, kind of getting into Bible, and uh, one day I get onto YouTube, and just randomly, I I I didn't specifically for uh, looking for some information, but I just come across a video about. The Noah's Ark has been found. There was a document, so I watch it, and then like, and I just like I saw the video, and uh, I see the, all the evidence, and indicating that's all true. And I was like, okay, so the Noah's Ark, Noah's Ark, or the great flood in the Bible story was true. And I was like, okay, so I, and I thought to myself, if that's true, how about the other stories, like the Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And, or the Rassy Crossing. How about those events or many other events? So because uh, out of that, you know, curiosity, I start searching, searching, searching more, more information. And I later found out way, all of those events happened before and there's all the evidence can prove. So that made me think about, okay, if all those events are true, is the Bible is absolutely true? And the thing is, even though I believe in God at the time, but I didn't really believe, you know, Bible, everything in Bible was true. I thought most, most of the events in, uh, in the Bible was like fairy tale, fairy tale, right? So, and that, and that, that was the turning point uh, uh, and a moment to, to help me see the possibility of the, the credibility of the Bible. So then I started the journey of studying the scriptures, studying the Bible at that point. Now, as I was continuing studying, 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 listening to different pastor teaching, and the 2012, April 1st, my, uh, my deacon asked me, hey, Will, so uh, I, I see you, uh, you, you want to dedicate 
you know, your life to, to the Lord, uh, would you consider getting baptized? So I say, you know, yeah, okay, I, I'll get baptized. So April 1st, I got baptized. And then after baptism, Brad, Brad McCarthy, the friend that brought me into the Bible study, and uh, then he 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 uh, he reached out to me, and we hang out, and he started asking me like, so Will, um, now that you're baptized, uh, do you have anything that uh, that you don't understand that that you would like to know? You know, maybe I can help you. So I said, yeah, Brad, you know what? Um, I just want to know more about the Bible. I just want to have better understanding of Bible. Then Brad said, you know, well. Maybe you should try, you know, pray to God with this sentence. So he suggests me to, to add one sentence sentence in my prayer. He said, you know, you, just try you know, adding this sentence in your prayer every time you pray. That you know, hey Father, you know, would you teach me your word through your Holy Spirit? So you know, at that time I didn't really believe what that would do to me, you know, uh, but I just follow the advice, you know, who is a senior to me. So I just okay, I, I will do it, and I, I just follow the advice and start praying every time, adding that sentence, and little did I know that how, uh, the the impact that the prayer does for the rest of my life. So ever since I start praying like that, you know, God just made my made my heart so peaceful in every situation, and then He just made me more and more hungry. As I as I'm studying the scripture, and I remember at that time after April first, two thousand twelve, and uh, every day you know after school I, I I would just go back to my uh, uh, apartment and then open up my Bible. I don't want to do anything else. Just open up, up open up my Bible and start studying, studying, studying. And and I remember my roommates they would come back like you know, Will, are you not are you not tired tired of you know reading the Bible you know. Every day you're doing the same thing. What's wrong with you? So anyway, I was super, super hungry for the Word of God. So it, as I was hungry for, for the Word of God, my knowledge in uh, in Word of God increased, increased, and then uh, to the point that I, I felt like you know I I have lot you know I know a lot of stuff. I I kind of puffed up in my knowledge. I start sharing with people uh, some of the theology. And uh, for instance, like you know, uh, the pre-trip, uh, mid-trip, uh, and post-trip rapture, and uh, and then uh, I thought I I was trying to love people, but I end up uh, being you know like I end up pushing people away from following the God of Israel. So I learned my lesson and I continue uh, with my you know journey in studying the Scripture. Now moving toward 2013, and uh, praise God, you know he he gave me a job. Right, and I start working. But even though as I was working, I still use my spare time every second, every minute, as much as possible to study the scripture. Even when I travel in a in a hotel, I was just I always prepare books and then just open up the books to read and to understand. You know, to uh, to 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 study the scripture. So and um, this has been going on since then and until now. It it, it never stopped. It stayed the same. Right, and then. 2013, toward 2014, um, there was another turning point happened. Um, as I was learning, learning, being open-minded to different, you know, theology, I bump into a uh, a, a preacher, a pastor. His name is Doug Patchler, and uh, he was teaching at the Seven Days Advance Church, and uh, I was just so open to listen to what 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 he's can offer, right? So, and uh, through my study with him, and then I see that, okay, keeping Sabbath is, is the mandate. And then the, as a believers, we should keep a Sabbath. So, and I, but I was, I was curious why, you know, the church I'm going to does not keep Sabbath. So that's when I start, you know, uh, uh, going on the journey, finding out the reason why no, we don't keep the Sabbath and everything else, all, all the law. So as I'm going through the, 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 all those teachings, you know, the reason why we don't keep laws, and uh, I, my understanding in keeping the law getting more consolidated, consolidated every day. And then, but at the, at the time, you know, I'm still going to the church, you know, the Chinese church, which is on Sunday. 
but at the same time, I was looking for a, a Sabbath keeping church. For some reason, I couldn't find any church, uh, Sabbath keeping church at that time. Now, uh, in 2014, and my deacon just talked to me saying, Well, um, would you like to lead a Bible study on Book of Galatians? And I was like, Yeah, sure, you know, I, I would like to uh, do that, right? <clears throat> so, and as I was preparing for my for my uh, Bible study on Book Galatian, I was going online, you know, searching for all the material information uh, I can find, you know, and then 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 I discover uh, a person, a, a pastor, and his teaching, right, on on the Book of Galatians. And when when I when I listened to his teaching, it just it just the information that he provided was like, oh, so intriguing, so like I never heard of, even though I have studied so much already. I was like, why I never heard of this? But it's so good, right? So I take all, all the information that I learned from his teaching and then take it to the Bible study. And the first Bible study, and I prepared all the handouts to, uh, to the brothers and sisters and I start explaining. And everything went very well. And, then, and I remember at the end of the Bible study, the, the, the wife of the deacon and pat my back and say, well, good job, good job, you know. I was like, oh, thank you, thank you, and uh, uh, but but I made a mistake uh, after that. So before the second Bible study, I felt like you know I I should tell I should tell my uh, deacon what I truly believe now. So I call my deacon and say you know all right uh, brother uh, brother Song, can I can I talk to you about something? And he said sure sure sure. You come to my house Thursday night. So I went to his house and then the. Sat down and I start telling him that you know okay I'm keeping Sabbath I'm trying to uh keep in the law right so and as soon as I said that it just the ball drops and the 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 deacon you know his response was very very uh you know, unexpected I, I didn't expect that he he was like you know well why why are you are keeping this uh, keeping Sabbath when did you start it you know you are going astray. Uh, you know, uh, so many people has been like you, but I don't want you to be one of one of those people being astray. So, as I was trying to explain, but I I didn't give it any chance. But anyway, long story short, um, so we left and we departed, and the next day, the next Bible study turned out to be a total nightmare, and it was supposed to be my, my Bible study, but that everyone start attacking my theology every time I bring up the law. Everybody saying. No, we are no longer on the law, but on the grace. So let's move on. So, but in the end, I finished the Bible study, but it was very, very painful, painful experience going through that Bible study because I, I didn't have much chance to talk. And then the, uh, uh, and then later on, you know, uh, uh, the pastor sees that, you know, uh, the, he has to address this issue with, with me about, you know, keeping the law. So he called me up before a meeting with the deacon and him and me. And, uh, and I just, you know, before the meeting, I brought a book to, to the pastor. And then, uh, and, and, and I was saying, Pastor, can you, can you read this, this book? And so that you probably can uh, understand why I believe what I believe now. And the response that I received from the pastor was like, so the pastor was looking at the book and, and he was telling me that, you know, well, a will, not all the Christian book is good for you. You have to look at the uh, publication uh, where, where they publicate it. Right. So uh, and and he says, you know, I don't know this republication uh, publication place, so I'm not gonna read it. Then he returned the book back to me. So at that moment, uh, truthfully, I was so shocked and heartbroken. And I realized, you know, wow, you know, what else can I do, right? But anyway, in a meeting, the the pastor trying to convince me not to keep the law, but uh, I I try to explain, but uh, I I didn't I. I didn't submit to his authority, and then in the end, uh, the pastor said, "You know, okay, well, uh, if you don't submit to my authority, and uh, I have to let you go." And, uh, and then I respond, "Okay, um, I will go, but I will coming back to the church, you know, for the fellowship." So, <clears throat> so in other words, I was nicely kicked out by the church, and uh, then. Then after that, I uh, <clears throat> I found another Messianic congregation, uh, which keep the the Sabbath and everything and, and, and the Torah and the law, 
and I start attending there for two years. And uh, I, I like, you know, uh, everything that they have. And uh, I thought, you know, I'll be in a church for a long time, right? Maybe for the rest of my life. But who knows, uh, at the, uh, you know, probably the, at the end of the two years, uh, something happened. So one day I had a, uh, I, I hang out with a brother from the church, from the congregation. And then the, he, uh, we went out to a restaurant and then the, he ordered a pork dish, pork meal. And I was like, okay, brother, why you order pork dish? Do you know that we, we should not eat pork? And, and he told me that, well, well, you know, we're no longer under the law, but uh, we're under grace. And uh, in the New Testament that, you know, we don't, we don't need to eat kosher or clean animals. So, and, and I was trying to like, you know, dis explain to him, you know, that that's not right. But uh, anyway, long story short, we get into the arguments. And then later on, uh, he talked to the rabbis uh, in the congregation. And the rabbi called me up for meetings. So uh, after three meetings, and then the, the rabbi couldn't convince me. And he just, you know, asked me like, Will, uh, I, I have to let you go. So he nicely walked me out of the congregation again. So that's my second time. <clears throat> and, and I want you to see that, you know, what uh, <clears throat> um, God has ha God has prepared me for, for all those two rejections uh, already before, even in the school. Uh, if, you, if you remember, you know, the, all my Chinese friends, they, they reject me. And uh, the, 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 the lowest point that I went through, they helped me to, to deal with those two rejections from the church I, I was going to. And I, and I see that as a like cycle that God trying to, uh, trying to uh, um, want me to see that. You know, that's how he disciplined me and trained me. But anyway, so after that, after I left that, that congregation, and uh, I, 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 didn't, I didn't have any congregation to go to, right? Then uh, a, a beloved, a kind brother, whose name is Bremen, and uh, um, he, he just so happened to be a part of our podcast. And he contacted me and then saying, okay, Brother Will, you know, uh, uh, what's going on with you, right? I say, you know, I, yeah, you know, I, I was expelled by a uh, congregation and uh, I, I have no congregation to go to. And he said, you know, all right, why, why, why don't you come visit my congregation? And that congregation is BYA. And ever since then, I started attending BYA. And, and, and because of that, I have found so many, you know, like-minded, you know, young folks like me, right? And, uh, and who are among us in the podcast, and we start working together. You know, we, um, you know there is some difference in our belief. You know, not everything that, that, that we believe is the same. But to me, you know, what's more important is the unity in Messiah. So we work together. I just, we, we just wanted to, to bring honor and glory to the name of, you know, to God's name. So, uh, so basically, that's, that's my testimony. I hope it's not too long. But uh, before I end my testimony, um, I wanted to bring up, you know, <laughs> what Nick said years ago in China before, uh, before I came to the United States. Um, I still remember at that time, Nick said, you know, Will, you know, well, I can't believe you're going to Detroit, you know, it's, uh, but, uh, you know, be prepared. And uh, you, you probably will facing a lot of difficulties. And then now, guess what? You know, I, I just, I'm here in Detroit and then serving God and the lifestyle that, I, that I'm in now. And I could never imagine. 10 years ago when I was in China, I would have never imagine 10 years later, I'll be who I am today. I was, I was a man who pursuing money, fame, and uh, maybe, you know, something, I, I don't even know, like all those secular things. But guess what? You know, God has changed me. God has changed my worldview. God has changed my, uh, my, <clears throat> my attitude. And then he, he has completely changed me to, to someone that he want me to be, not someone I wanted to be. And I just want to encourage you and, and hopefully my testimony can be a blessing to you. And um, so I think that's my testimony. And uh, if you have any more question and uh, feel free to email us. I will, f I, I would love to, you know, 
respond, you know, with uh, your question or whatever. But you know, until then, stay prayed up. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time. <laughs>